<laughs> What's good, guys? It's your girl Amber, and I'm back at you again with a YouTube. Welcome back to the channel, Amber and the Truth. What I do here is expose the truth, the gospel truth that is. And today, I'm gonna do another reaction video. Sorry, I sat, I froze like that. I just, I forgot what, what I was doing for a split second. But um, I'm back at the game. Last week there was no video. I was sick. Uh. My body was like, nah, uh, no, uh, I was sick all week, to be honest. I'm just now getting over it. Glory to God for that. But um, today we're going to be reacting to a video that someone sent me to react to. This isn't on YouTube, so you won't be able to find this on YouTube. So you have to say to watch it with me. It's an hour and 15 minutes long. Um, I got other stuff to do today, so let's get to it. Um... Let's just jump into the video. We ain't got time. And we ain't got time to waste. All right. So this is about, it's called the Watchmen movie, the War Room podcast. Um, it's a warning for America, I think. That's what they said it is. Something, something like that. I don't know, but let's see. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth, and give them warning from me. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live because he is warned. Also, thou hast delivered thy Ezekiel 3.17 and Ezekiel 3.21. In 2014 at the Mighty Men of Valor Conference, while Travis Green was worshiping, Apostle Tony Brazelton stopped the worship for a minute and said to envision being in the presence of God. And I had this open vision. In this open vision, I saw myself walking on top of the globe like a blueprint of the planet. And I had this glory light on the inside of me. Now, as I was walking around the planet, there were dark silhouettes coming towards me. And as soon as they came in contact with me, the light on the inside of them would turn on. And I knew that they were instantly saved. Instantly saved. Instantly saved. And it was one at a time, and then it was 10 at a time, and then it was 50 at a time. Till there was a whole entire army of people next to me who were walking the globe, winning souls for Jesus. Winning souls for Jesus. We looked up and there was a glory light coming from heaven, beaming us up into the heavens and the earth was black again. <laughs> After the vision, I knew immediately that this meant that there was going to be a revival and great awakening of souls that would encompass the whole entire planet. See, no matter how dark it gets, no matter what judgment comes upon the earth during the tribulations, know that God is furiously sending his love and his people throughout the whole earth, seeking to win as many as possible to Jesus. Okay, I like this intro.
Part 1. The Foundation. Dreams and Visions. My name is Donald Francis Walker Jr. And for the past three decades, I've been having prophetic dreams and visions about events that have occurred and are occurring now and will definitely occur in the future. And now I'm mature enough to know the purpose, which is intercession and to warn. Mm. <clears throat> but before I go into events like COVID-19, terrorist activity and things like that, I need to go back to the foundation when I was a teenager. When I was 15 years old, my father, Captain Donald Francis Walker Sr. was stationed at Hickam, Hawaii. And in the spring of 1996, I had an interesting dream. I had a dream that my great grandmother in Atlantic City was in a rocking chair, rocking back and forth. And then I saw her spirit come out of her body and go up into the cloud. As her spirit went up into the clouds, her body stopped and she passed away. And I knew instantly in the dream that she had passed away and died. So the next day I told my father, the following day, my grandmother actually passed away suddenly. And it was a shock for me and my father because this is something that had occurred a few nights before in my dream or the night earlier. Mm. Well, things got really interesting as my father flew from Hickam, Hawaii to New Jersey to attend the funeral and to help with the arrangements. And I had a dream that my father passed away. Oh, so no. a couple of days later, I had a conversation with my father and I told him, dad, I had a dream that you died as well. And he yelled at me over the phone because he was excited because my grandmother had just passed away less than a week earlier. And I dreamt a dream similar to he was excited. the dream that I had about him. And I told him, I didn't understand what, you know, the, what the reason was for the dream or anything like that. We didn't come up in prophetic circles or circles where they explain dreams and visions. I just didn't know what was going on. That week, my father spoke to my grandfather, who was part of the Pentecostal church in New Jersey at the time. He gave his life to the Lord Jesus. Amen. He found out he was sick, had hepatitis C for over 15 years and didn't know it. Wow. And by that time, his liver was far gone. Within six weeks of me having the dream, my father passed away. I mean, he gave his life to Jesus. Amen. Because as time went by, I didn't understand why I was having prophetic dreams. I saw the Oklahoma City blast before it occurred, a couple of days before it occurred in a dream. I even saw a plane crashing into the Pentagon hmm. less than a year before 9-11. This is a foundation of what I need to talk to you about. Because there are other events that are occurring in the world today that not only did I see, but the Lord allowed me to show what the men of God and the women of God are supposed to do in this season in order to end certain catastrophes. Okay. That's why I'm here today, sharing a warning and a promise of a blessing if the people of God that are called by the name of the Lord were to humble themselves and pray. So I hope you heed this five part series that I'm about to share with you called The Watchman. You have just watched part one. Next is part two, my dream of COVID-19 in the year 2008. Bro. In 2008, mm -hmm. I had a dream within a dream. Now, normally, when I have a dream that goes within a dream, it's hard to explain, but it's like a two part dream. And most of the time, those are the dreams that come true. And in early in 2008, I had a interesting dream where I was walking into New York City. And when I was walking into New York City, tens, maybe hundreds of thousands of people were on the streets trying to escape the city because there was something that was happening in the city. And 
as I was walking into the city, I was the only one going in and the crowd began to split to let me in so I could get a clear view of what was going on in the city. I went by a few apartment complexes or condos and what I saw on the inside were people that were sheltered in place like they were quarantined. But I didn't know what that was at the time when I had the dream. All I knew was people were looking outside the windows and watching TV afraid to go outside, mm. which was very confusing exactly to me at the time. Happened. When I left the domiciles of where people were living, I passed mm. through two churches in Madison Square Garden. Madison Square Garden, there was a church service happening in 2008. And what was happening within the two churches and within Madison Square Garden was the same thing. There were church services occurring. There were pastors or preachers on the stage or the pulpit. And there were praise teams behind them that were separated. It was like they had space between them of at least six to 10 feet between them. And they were having full church services but there were nobody in the pews. <laughs> nobody was sitting in the seats. Yeah. Nobody was enjoying the service, but there were cameras that were taking photographs or video of what they were doing in the church service. And this was the first time I had ever seen anything like this where multiple churches were having church and nobody was there to attend. Crazy. And they all were saying similar things. What they were saying was they were crying out to the Lord, asking for a touch from God. And what I could hear in the background was the voice of the Lord saying, no, touch me like the woman with the issue of blood. Whatever was going on in the city in New York at this time caused the three churches collectively to reach out for a touch from God. So as I left the churches and Madison Square Garden, I began to walk to where Ground Zero was. Now, this was before Freedom Tower was built. So I did not see the tower, but I knew that it was the grounds of Ground Zero. And as I looked up, I saw a very large military plane probably about the size of a C-5 aircraft, but it was different. And on this military plane was the large flag for the Chinese government or the communist Chinese flag was on the side of this military plane. And what I immediately knew within this dream was that whatever was coming from this plane was what was causing this strange behavior of the people below. And as I looked at the bottom of the plane, the bottom of the plane opened up and they were getting ready to release something else. Meaning this plane and this flag represented a nation that had done something, had done an attack that was released upon the people causing the behavior and that they were getting ready to release another thing. Mm. And when I saw that, I reached my hands in the sky and simultaneously I could see the other churches, the other pastors and the leaders within those churches raising their hands up at the same time as me. And what they did was they did two things. They repented they asked God for forgiveness and said that they would turn away from sin. And they specifically prayed against the attack. Those were the two things, repentance and praying against the attack. And right before I woke up, whatever was getting ready to be released from this military plane that had the Chinese flag began to dissolve away. It was like as soon it was get, as it was getting ready to drop from the plane, the attack or whatever the weapon was began to dissolve and it completely disappeared and was not able to affect America. And I heard the voice of the Lord 
give a warning. Tell me exactly what was being released and why it was being released and how to get rid of it. And I wrote it down in my Bible and I preached it at a Church of God in Christ church, Refuge Temple, Church of God in Christ in 2008 in Gulfport, Mississippi. And the reception that I had was not well. Of course. Usually when I preach or when I speak, I get a well reception and people come and talk to me after the sermon. But the looks that I received after Bet I you they believe that, you now. and the level of rejection that I incurred allowed me to keep my mouth closed. And I was quiet about this dream for 12 years. And not only that, I thought that I completely missed God. And other prophetic dreams that I had, dozens of them, I kept to myself. Well, last April, 2020, I was on my phone during the COVID, when COVID-19 began to expand and spread across the nation and the world. I remember the whole world. I scrolled on my phone crazy. and what I saw was the very same image that I saw in my dream. I saw multiple churches having church on a Wednesday night with the pastor and the praise teams in the pulpits separated six to ten feet apart and the pews were empty in the church. And when I saw this, I immediately remembered what occurred in the dream that I had in 2008 and what I had preached. And I called my spiritual authority, the one that ordained me and my wife as pastors, Apostles Tony and Cynthia Brazelton. And I told them about the vision and I told them about the repentance and the things that the Lord said. And Apostle Brazelton told me, he said, don't you think that you need to repent? And I said, why, why would I need to repent? He told me, he said, if you would have continued to tell people and to preach this since 2008, the people probably would have been warned. So what I did was I repented and I began over the last year to really think about all the other prophetic dreams and visions that have occurred. And now I'm here today to talk to you as a watchman. Next, I will begin to discuss what I heard from the voice of the Lord in the dream about why it is here, where it came from, and how to stop it. Next is part three, the shedding of innocent blood. Jehovah Sabbath means the Lord of hosts. It literally means it is talking about Jehovah God with respect to his judgment. He is the leader of angelic armies. The Lord of hosts means the leader of the armies of the Lord. Jesus loves us, he pursues us, and he chases us down. You just have to realize that. You have to believe and you just have to receive this love. Your life will never be the same. Once you receive his love, once you believe who he is, your life will never be the same. Thanks. All this new information, bro. It's crazy. <clears throat> Before I spoke to you about a prophetic dream I had in 2008, which I actually preached about in a Church of God in Christ church in Gulfport, Mississippi in 2008. I thought I missed it. 
Well, how could I miss it? I didn't actually make myself dream. <laughs> but when I preached about it, what I saw and what I heard, I thought I missed it. So I kept my mouth closed for 12 years. Now, previously, I spoke to you about the details of the dream. But at the end of the dream, I could clearly hear the voice of the Lord telling me pertaining to COVID-19, what was going to occur, where it was going to occur, why it was going to occur, world was shut down. and how to stop it. And they were kind of removed from it, but... So that's what I'm getting ready to speak to you about right the now. The whole world. Everybody. Great. I clearly heard that there were three reasons why this was going to occur. The lack of repentance. Mm. The lack of repentance in the church. And the shedding of innocent blood. Mm. I also heard this and I spoke about it as well in 2008. I heard that this disease would come from a faraway land. It would affect the entire globe but would affect America mostly. Why us? That people would be dying and falling like flies all over the place. And that the later stages of this illness would be similar to the later stages of AIDS in the lungs. Uh Now we find it interesting with what was exposed in the dream in 2008 about it being like the later stages of AIDS that now AIDS medication is being used to cut hospitalization and death. Very interesting, the details that I received in 2008 about this. I would like to read you a scripture. Second Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us word that not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I'm not sitting here telling you that people are dying because they're in sin. But what I saw was something that was released by an enemy. Mm -hmm. I saw a Chinese military plane with the Chinese flag on it. And the voice that I heard said that this was an attack and that it was going to be allowed to happen. And that the nation and the people of the world need to repent but specifically the church needs to repent and in the dream i saw the people specifically the men and women of god reaching their hand out to the lord and repenting and then more specifically i heard about the shedding of innocent blood the next part dealt with blood entering the ground and crying out to the Lord. Mm. Similar to Genesis chapter four, when Abel's Abel's blood blood cried out to the Lord after his brother Cain had Mm. slain him. Or I thought your brother Abel. The shedding of innocent blood is a very serious topic. What I saw was the remnants of abortion in this nation. Not just abortion, but the innocent blood crying out from the ground due to the criminal justice system. What people don't understand is that abortion is crazy. Abortion is not only a sacrifice to a demon, not only murder, but it's also Satan doing what he does best, trying to stop babies that are coming here sent by God to do whatever God's will is. He's trying to kill them off and to gang and drug violence, not just in this nation, but around the world. And it is not just for the world to repent, because we know that many people in the world will not repent. 
2 Chronicles 7, 14 states, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will. then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. See, as the people in the dream were crying out to God, looking for a touch from God, I heard the voice of the Lord say, no, reach out and touch me like the woman with the issue of blood. And in this situation, it was an issue of blood, but it was an issue of innocent blood being slain in the land. This matter looks so weird. In this nation of America, since Roe v. Wade, over 61 million abortions have occurred legally in this nation. In 1909, Pastor Parham and William Seymour had revivals that broke out earlier in Kansas and in Azuzu Street in California. And on the same day, on a Sunday morning in 1909, they both prophesied the same thing half a nation away. They prophesied that in a hundred years that there will be a generation to rise up that will be prophets and be filled with the spirit of God that will carry a revival around the world. Unfortunately, many of those prophets did not even get a chance to breathe their first breath of life. And the reason I believe in the dream that the pastors and the men and women of God needed to reach out and repent is because this situation is something that is not spoken about in many of our pulpits to the point where Planned Parenthood on their, survey, on their surveys have stated that a majority of the people that are involved in abortion unfortunately characterize themselves as Christians. This is not a judgmental thing. This just is what it is. The shedding of innocent blood also dealt with our criminal justice system. Even now, the Innocence Project is freeing many men and women from death row and long jail times due to fraudulent charges, a crooked system, and sometimes wayward police officers. And what I also saw in this vision was not just the abortion issue and the shedding of innocent blood through our criminal justice system, but I also saw the shedding of innocent blood in our inner cities from gang violence and drug violence because of certain individuals, billionaires and multimillionaires with the ability to fly in drugs and guns into our country. And the politicians having the power to do something and not doing it. So the results of this issue can be changed if the people of God that are called by his name, which is Jesus Christ, the Christians, would humble themselves and pray and turn from the wicked ways. Isaiah 58 talks about the men and women of God crying out their voice like a trumpet, not keeping quiet, but speaking against injustice. And in that chapter, it says that when they speak against injustice and help those that are in need, it says that health will come on their body speedily. The wealth and the inheritance of Jacob will come to their households and the glory of God, the power of God will shine upon them as the sun does in the noonday. So I hope that this is clear for the men and women of God that have a responsibility to be watchmen. We have to speak up against this situation of abortion and the shedding of innocent blood just as important as it is to speak up against other political issues and financial issues and sermons about prosperity and the blessings of God 
I hope that you heed this warning because what I'm going to talk to you about next is the result of the people of God not heeding the warning because I saw multiple terrorist attacks. I saw the fall of Washington, D.C. and other cities within this nation mm. and ultimately the fall of America. I just... But the good news is that there's a way out of this, which is if the people cry out to God, reach out and touch God, repent and open up their mouths like and a trumpet. of America? That's not Next. America is part four confirmation of the prophets and america's prophetic warning (coughs) but first hear from our ministry partners Imagine the more America version, bro. Welcome to the Next Step Center services to those experiencing pregnancy or parenting. I'm Carol Alexander, and I'm the CEO here at Next Step. We've been serving here in South St. Petersburg, uh, uh, Midtown on the Deuces, 22nd Street South, for the last 27 years. And it's an opportunity for us to provide um, services to men, women, and families experiencing unintended unintended pregnancy, uh, where we are here supporting, treasuring, expanding, promoting, and preserving a culture of life. A couple of our daily breads for pay. This is our boutique. Uh, It's a place where families are able to get the items that they need to support an unplanned pregnancy, whether it's diapers, wipes, uh, baby clothing, blankets, almost anything that they might need uh, in in terms of support. This is our medical exam room where we perform ultrasounds, um, STG, STI testing, of course, pre-pregnancy tests are offered. And um, we operate as a pregnancy medical clinic under the direction of a licensed physician, uh, Dr. Stephen Shields. And this room allows us to be able to give moms, dads, grandmoms uh, a window into the room. So these are our humble beginnings. At the time that we uh, started, this property was donated. Uh, This house was on it. It was uh, uh, then condemned by the city. We were able to tear it down. A group uh, out of Alabama called Carpenters for Christ came in and Carpenters built the Christ. building. I mean, hit them and and we can see house. the building finished. Uh, this was back in 1992. <laughs> and we actually opened the doors here in 94. So this is one of our counseling rooms uh, with uh, women come and they're interested in a pre-pregnancy test. This is most of the times where they start and we're able to uh, provide them with options counseling so that we talk to them about all their options and choices and help them to be able to make a decision for life. Thank you so much for coming on this tour of the Next Step Center. And uh, we're so excited about uh, all the things that God is doing uh, through the uh, Next Step Center ministry where our mission is to provide life-affirming solutions as well as physical, emotional, and spiritual support to women, men, and families experiencing unintended pregnancy as we promote a culture of life. Our vision is to see thriving families whole and complete, lacking nothing through Jesus Christ. And our outreach, of course, is to continue to bring diverse communities together so that the God-given value and worth of all human life is both affirmed and supported. Another ministry partner is Expectant Fathers Without Voices. They are assisting us in translating this movie and docu-series into Spanish. The founder, Elliot Cohn, is a pro-life advocate, expressing the need for biological fathers to have a greater voice. Elliot Cohn will be on warroompodcast.com with an interview about the truth behind witchcraft 
and abortion coming this summer on our podcast. The topic of life, you're now not looking at a baby as a baby, you're looking at a baby as a choice. The evil, satanic, demonic abortion industry has been Confirmation from the prophets. The purpose of me showing confirmation of the prophets is found in scripture. 2 Corinthians 13.1, also Deuteronomy 19.15 and Matthew 18.16, all state that out of the mouths of two and three witnesses, let every word be established. Amen. I hope you enjoy and heed this message from the watchman. Already know that it was coming and that he had a plan to be able to use that and so when he told me this then I my spiritual eyes were open and I saw two bowls in heaven and you know, the Bible talks about bowls in heaven but I saw that the first one that I could see was uh, the bowl that was full of iniquity and it was full of sin it was it was it stunk you could smell it it um, you could see the smoke coming up from it was uh, was foul. It wasn't, it wasn't, uh, it was very unclean. And so you could see this start to tip over and start to pour out. And as it started to pour out, this is what I heard the spirit of God say. He says that there is a judgment for repentance uh, that is here. And the judgment is for, he says, uh, the, the, the lives that have been lost through abortion, the ungodly law. What's crazy is that, like, for me, I don't know about for the rest of y'all, but for me, 2020 kind of just, it altered me back to God. Like, I got saved in 2014. I was 18 years old when I got saved. But I had no discipleship and no leadership, so I didn't know anything else to do after that. And it kind of just got sucked back into the world naturally, like one does. And 2020 was like, oh, you going to pay attention. God was like, you're going to pay attention to me. I'm going to get your attention one way or another. And it's like, okay, got me there. Definitely got it. Was kept it. The greed over compassion for the poor. And then he spoke about something that I would have never thought he said. He gave me a scripture for it. But he said about... uh justice not being done speedily in the courts of the world right which was was quite and he says there's a judgment on those things now if i was sitting in god's place and i was going to say there's a judgment upon the earth i probably would not have mentioned any of those he said what is the judgment i actually believe the judgment was covid and nobody wants to hear that i will probably have a lot of my prophet colleagues that'll go you didn't really say that did you <laughs> did you dr sharon and i go yeah Oh, I did, I did, you know. But, you know, I believe, and you say, but but you said that it wasn't of God. I still believe that it's a judgment up, up, up on the earth. It's a plague. Well, and, I mean, in one place in Samuel, Bible, it says, it, and it Satan rose up against David to number Israel. Another place it says, and the Lord stirred up David to number Israel. And then this plague gets released. And so, you know, when people hear the word judgment is coming, I think everyone's so careful because people think of hell. Most people think of hell. And that said, if Roe versus Wade is not overturned, if they yes. did not repent, yes. if they didn't, in fact, what you don't know, Bishop, is I got a phone call. There was a man in Australia that's considered to be a real prophetic man that said, if Roe versus Wade is not overturned in the United States, Jesus appeared to him and said, you tell the Americans if they don't overturn it and start protecting the, the ones I'm sending them, the little babies, severe, severe judgment is going to strike the whole United States to where they, won't even, they, they people won't even recognize what it is in, in the future. Tell, tell me very briefly about what you saw. We, we still have five minutes here. I saw, what the Lord gave you. I, he saw the destruction was coming upon this country, starting upon this country. He showed me a big wave that was going to hit. Like water wave, where thousands were going to before Katrina. Katrina this, yeah, this was two thousand what? Uh, four, oh, wasn't it? Two thousand four. Yeah. I December said that like to this day, I will say in, in in like without hesitation that any big flood, any 
big body of water coming to wipe out anything An earthquake and it's a big tsunami hurricane all of that is god's judgment i truly believe that and th look at the witchcraft that was in louisiana Heavy witches, witchcraft, warlock, demonic things. God was done. Washed it all out. Like well, he got, God showed him all this before it happened. 80, right. And he also showed me all out. terrorists. It's already here in this country. And you said you saw, you couldn't see their faces, but there was one woman and four men that were working as a sleeper cell. Right. One lady. On a and, four and it was a major attack. What? I right. Mean, I mean, right. We're talking about something that's so major, people can't even comprehend it. You can put super in front of it. Super major <laughs> attack. When Jeremiah said, the prophet said that judgment was coming to Israel and it was, he was prophesying for the 19th year, which is, now, which is now 2020 for America, he said a plague, he spoke about a plague or pestilence coming. And he, he said it prophesying over a field called the Valley of Hinnom. And he said, because of what you did to the, your children, it's going to come back upon you. And it wasn't that it was only one reason. There's not just one reason for a plague. But he said, this invokes the judgment of God. They offered up thousands of their children. Well, we have offered up millions of our children. America has offered up 60 million unborn children. The world has offered up uh, uh, over a billion. We have, we have done more of this in this generation than any other. And what is this plague that has come upon us? You know, the sin of, of killing children is the sin of the older against the younger. Well, the, there, we have now a plague that specially strikes down the older rather than the younger. And where does it happen? Jeremiah said that it's going to return to the place that is the center of where you, you lifted up your children. Well, the center of abortion in America is New York. What became the center of the plague? New York. Well, it was the city, New York City is the capital of abortion in America. That is became the center. More work have, have been struck down there. Remember, Sid, we spoke about that image of, of death that appeared over New York City. Well, it all came back. And also, the day that the headlines filled America saying that the plague had come to our soil, there was a date next to it. The date was January 22nd. That's the same date that America legalized the killing of children. It was also one year anniversary, one year to the day that New York passed that gruesome law of killing children up to the time of birth. And you know what they did? They celebrated time. and they lit up the harbinger, Sid. They lit up the tower in pink to celebrate it. So here this mm -hmm. came. But not only that, but there is a jubilee of judgment as well. And if you take when abortion on demand began in America, this, this horrible sin, it began in 1970 before it was legalized across the world, across the, the nation. And it was New York that pioneered it and really introduced it to the rest of the nation. And so if you take uh, Jubilee, the 50th year is 2020, is the Jubilee of abortion. And, and when, they, when the day that they passed it, it was April, two days, April 9th and 10th. When they did a study to find out when the peak of the of the plague struck New York City, they found it was April 9th and 10th, 50 years to the day, the day that they legalized the ancient sin. See, God, don't be playing. <laughs> My father does not play. He don't at all. Oof. Uh, Miles... Tell me, in December 2021, you had a prophecy, and uh, it had to do on Roe versus Wade, and you made this public. Tell me what God has shown you. I said, yes, uh, in late December, or no, actually the beginning of December in 2021, uh, as I was just spending time worshiping the Lord, uh, the Lord began to reveal to me uh, that his plan was to overturn Roe versus Wade and that it was going to specifically happen in 2022. Really, what the Lord spoke to me, Sid, was that 2022 was a major turnaround year for God's people, for the United States of America, uh, all of for the past five or six months, I've been uh, preaching this and prophesying this publicly. 
that in 2022, this is a divine turnaround year for God's people and for the United States of America, for this country, that God was going to completely overturn Roe versus Wade. And this would be the main sign that God would give that revival has arrived for the United States of America, for this country. And I'm, when I say that, I mean nationwide, national revival. The Lord told me, Sid, that national revival would not happen until Roe versus Wade was overturned. And I believe that. Whoa. These last parts are revival. very difficult for me. As I stated, I was told to repent for not releasing what I had kept my mouth closed for 12 years. Mm -hmm. This is a foundation of what I need to talk to you about because there are other events that are occurring in the world today that not only did I see, but the Lord allowed me to show. America's prophetic warning. Ah, uh, yeah. What you gonna do to us now? This is what I saw. This dream that I'm going to speak to you about was very interesting. It was in Washington, D.C., where I was like a fly on the wall, meaning I saw something unfolding, but I was not actually there myself. What I saw did not make sense years ago when I had the dream, but now it makes a lot of sense. I saw over a thousand terrorists who were Muslim extremists, over a thousand of them. They had the type of shawls around their necks that let me know exactly who they were. But what was interesting, the weapons that they had were not just AK-47s, but they were M4s. They were American militarized weapons that they somehow got their hands on. Now, this group of men was over a thousand in number. And the location of where they were was interesting to me. Where? Remember in January, the siege on the Capitol building during the protests? Mm -hmm. Okay, so they're not like and how so many people were able to breach the Capitol. <laughs> well, in this dream I had, it was over a thousand men with weapons, and they came to Washington, D.C. through underground tunnels. And specifically, they came up under the White House, under the Capitol building, and other agencies. And it was so many of them that the local police and military could do nothing. And by the time they were done sieging the, those facilities, those facilities were burned to the ground and a portion of our government was completely collapsed. Now, this dream was a dream within a dream. Okay. It went to a second part. And in the second part of the dream, it fast forwarded dozens of years later to where in Washington, D.C., on the mall, there was a museum. It was a small museum, but nevertheless, it was a built-up museum. And when I entered the museum, I saw an exhibit in the lobby. This exhibit was massive, and it said this. It said, how we took the Capitol in America. Uh -oh. And it was in first person. And the people that built the exhibit were the Muslim extremists. And they were so successful that they were able to build a small museum in Washington, D.C. Nah. And what I oh. saw was footage and maps of exactly how they got into the underground tunnels and exactly how they were able to collapse our government. Bro, huh? Now, this seems like something far-fetched. No. And if we were attacked, I don't believe that any nation, not even China, could take the whole of the United States of America. However, 
I was shown in this dream how Washington DC itself was able to be collapsed. I just actually yesterday heard of over 80,000 refugees coming around the world and tens of thousands of them not only coming to America, but going to be placed on US military bases throughout the nation. Uh, uh, uh. What? Now there was another dream that I had. Boy. That dealt with America. Then I saw the bombs in the sky, EMPs across America, electromagnetic pulse bombs with massive devastation. As soon as it was exploded, vehicles begin to explode like dominoes across highways, bridges, tunnels, and interstate systems with great casualties with anybody who was in the vehicles. This was extremely devastating as I had a bird's eye view to see everything. And even worse than that, I saw the power grids completely shut down all electricity in any vehicle, any city, anything with an electronic pulse was completely destroyed permanently. Bro. We could not transport food. Even our military could not respond. Now, I used to be in the Air Force. I retired and I was part of a nuclear response team, which I will not go further into, but we are preparing for such an attack. I knew in the spirit, spiritually, the only thing that could stop something like this from occurring as judgment on a nation is revival, repentance, and a great awakening. But unfortunately, I had more visions. Aww. Then I had another vision within a dream. I saw the invasion, and I will talk about that next. Y'all, what the... <laughs> Is, is the eruption going to happen? Is we this gonna dream I don't wanna be here. showed stealth submarines. It clearly means China's thinking about war. I've got more evidence for you. Take a look at this satellite picture. What you're looking, what you're looking at is a Chinese shipyard. That blue object is an attack submarine, possibly a nuclear powered one. Attack submarine. Intelligence reports had repeatedly warned of this, that China is developing a new class of submarines. And this could be it. More range, more reliable, and more protection for Chinese warships. An advanced type of submarine coming out of the ocean and in the Gulf of Mexico specifically, and then numerous ones coming around the coast of America. And when they opened up smaller boats, similar to the boats in Normandy on D-Day came out, but these boats were high tech. Oh, hell. As a dedicated amphibious combat vehicle, the Type 05 is aiming to provide unique amphibious capability that emphasizes speedy landing operations. China is the only country to produce such unique high-speed amphibious fighting vehicles it had a lot of technology and gunners. And when these boats came out of the submarine, thousands upon thousands of military troops came out. They were of different races. So they were not just Chinese. Some of them looked Russian or what would seem to have been Russian. And the reason I say that is because all of their uniforms were communists. And when they came on shore, they came on shore into cities where the police departments were lacking. I don't know what occurred at the point in this dream, but what it seemed to me was the police forces were reduced in the cities in which the communists came in. 
So there were not enough police officers present and the location in which they came on shore was nowhere near military bases. And they were able to enter into our nation through these shores and through these cities in order to take over. This is what I saw. But like I said, anything that is prophetic has a way out. Any warning has a way out. And in the previous segment, I spoke about exactly what the men and women of God have to do in order to keep certain things from occurring in a nation. See, this nation became a nation of covenant. When the Mayflower came, you can read the Mayflower Compact. The Mayflower Compact in 1620 has a specific statement in there that was pulled out by the textbooks. Textbooks in America place the Mayflower Compact within the pages of our textbooks, but they pull out specific phrases from the Mayflower Compact. And that phrase is this, that this nation or the settlement that would be founded in Virginia actually became Plymouth. And in this statement, it said that they were coming to America for the glory of God and for the advancement of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Bro, I see, I knew I was a tripping when I had a revelation about the Indians. Now, look, hear me out. So, I feel like maybe the last year or two, I feel like I was just, you know, Thanksgiving's been coming around. I'm like, people saying, you know, they killed the um, Indians, they killed everybody. And I was just like, that sounds very similar to what God told Israelites to do every single time they came up on a land. Every single time God gave them a land, God was like, kill every man, woman, and child. Everybody be about. And he did that because they believed in their God so heavily, there was no point of them living. You don't believe in me? Go be with your gods. You know what I'm saying? And plus they would spread that amongst Israel if they would have lived anyway. So every single time, he said to kill the animals too. Every day. Nothing must live when you conquer this land. So it made me think like, okay, so if Columbus came and they over here and they tricked the Indians and then they killed everything and they killed everybody, that sounds a lot like what God told the Israelites to do. It's starting to make sense now. Mm. This nation was founded even before the slave ships was founded on a covenant with God, with people who were persecuted Christians being persecuted by the Church of England and the Catholic Church in Europe. They were persecuted Christians. Okay. Oh, wow. This is all. This so what does that mean? Just like Israel, a nation that is covenanted with God, that has a covenant with God, can be released from certain calamities if the men and women of God would come together and humble themselves and pray <laughs> and turn from their wicked ways. That God would hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. So the next segment, I'm going to speak to you about a phenomenon called the rapture. Uh, now, I'm not going to speak about whether it's pre, mid, or post-tribulation. I'm just going to speak about what I saw in the coming of the Lord and the seven years of tribulation, what I saw in that time frame. Oh. Y'all, the rapture happening very soon. It is around the corner, bro. I'm excited to go see my father, and I believe it's pre-trip. Hello. Hello. My name is Don Francis Walker Jr. And on an earlier recording, I spoke to you about 
dreams and visions that I had, not only about COVID-19, but about different attacks on America from different nations and terrorist groups and why I felt it was important to heed the warning. But now I'm going to talk to you about a few other dreams that I had of a phenomenon called the rapture and the seven years of tribulation. Now I'm not here to discuss the pre-tribulation, mid-tribulation and post-tribulation raptures. I'm not here to discuss that. We all know whether what school of thought you come from, there will be a day where Christ comes back and collects his people. Her. But in 2007, I had a very interesting dream where the dream started. I was rising up off of the ground. And as I was rising up off of the ground, I looked down and the earth began to be becoming a distant further and further away from me. And when I looked in the horizon, I saw thousands upon thousands of people rising up from the ground, just like me. Amen. I looked back down and the earth cracked open and there were different beasts, like monstrous looking things coming out of the earth and jumping onto the people that were on the earth. See, there was a group of people that was rising up and there was a group of people who were left behind. This is the rapture. Some people say that the word rapture is not in the Bible, but that's not true. Take it up. If you study the original Greek from the New Testament, you'll see that the word taken away mm -hmm. in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17. Shall be caught up, yeah is the word harpazo, which means to take away in the blinking of an eye. But there was a saint named St. Jerome who was a theologian and a priest in the fourth century. I don't think Jerome looked like that. Who translated the Bible into Latin. When he translated the Bible into Latin from the Greek and the Hebrew, the same scripture he used in Latin, the word rapturo. The word rapturo, which means to catch away, is the where we get the word rapture today. So yes, the word rapture is in the Bible. It's just in the Latin translation. Period. Now, when it comes to this dream that I had, it was real interesting because I could see thousands of people in the horizon raising up at the same time. Mm. And when they rose up, I looked in the distance and I can see writing in the sky. It was a writing in fire. And this writing was sort of like an odometer of a car. Y'all remember those old odometers where you would see one, two, three, and the numbers would raise up slowly. That's what I saw in the distance. And a sentence came after the writing. It said 9,001, two, three and begin to go up in the writing of fire, 9,000 out of 10,000 prophecies have been fulfilled to the rapture of Jesus Christ. And when I saw that writing, I knew exactly what was taking place. What? People were raising up, escaping. What I could see was death and destruction below. Okay, preacher. Now, in another dream, I actually saw what was occurring on the earth. Now, Revelation, the book of Revelation speaks about post-rapture, different things that are supposed to occur on the earth. Right. Or if you're a post-trip component, what's supposed to occur around that time? There were different beasts that came from the bottomless pit, from the depths of hell onto the earth to sting mankind, where they would beg to die. And they won't I die. saw those things. That's crazy to me. I saw earthquakes that literally tore the earth where buildings would collapse within them. And I saw people escaping for their lives. Bro. It wasn't a, a natural event or a phenomenon that occurred that caused the earth to shift. 
I don't know if that event was just an earthquake or if it was from an asteroid or a meteorite hitting the earth. Meteorite. But whatever occurred caused the entire earth to shake. And then moments later, a wave arose from the ocean. And this wave was hundreds of feet tall. No, no ma'am. No, ma'am. My view on this event pulled out of the earth and I was able to look down and I saw that this wave was so big that it covered the entire east coast of the United States. See, I can swim. All the way to the Appalachian Mountains and covered the entirety of Florida up to the Panhandle. God is warning his people. Okay, I'm listening, Father. All this uh, water around me. I'm in a beach. There's people having fun. Uh, just people just kind of like, you know, tanning outside and all these things. And all of the sudden, I look out and I see a storm that is coming into the, the ocean. And all of the sudden, I hear this really loud shofar blast, like a trumpet really really loud the sky turned black and this wave came up an unusually enormous wave it was so huge and it kept coming and coming and getting bigger it was like hundreds of feet higher than the air i dare say a mile and it just came and it started crashing against the shoreline and again i heard the trumpet blast again this happened like seven times in my dream. It was seven different shofar blasts and seven very large waves. The waves were very dark. The water was very protected by the eastern shore. Um, the eastern shore, if something came across, would take the first grunt and then there would be lots of flooding to where I'm living. Um, but I, I want to call the saints to pray because I believe a tsunami on the east coast of the United States is part two to what I saw two years ago. Um, and how soon? I don't know. I mean, that the, the dream about that. Now we went back up to the top of that building and you can see back behind the mountains, this large uh, wave in the background coming. Which is, Kept, kept hearing this voice that's coming. Get out, no, get your paper, get out. If you could, if you could compare it to how large it was, how big, like to a building. I saw it over a mountain, okay. behind the mm-hmm. mountain. It was above the mountain. No, it's an arc. That's how high the wave was. I mean, if I so know how is. big a mountain is, I mean, it's, even if it's just a small mountain, that's huge. Okay. Um, and you could see it, and, and that was in the background. It hadn't even reached the mountains yet. And uh, it blocked out the sun and everything. And Pouring out of this building. And tsunami, tsunami, everyone's yelling tsunami. Um, I then felt like the dream was sped up to show me the overarching picture of the dream, which um, essentially I was given a view of further away from the building and I could see this wall, mountain high wall of water coming at the shore and at the building. I don't think high, do you know how large mountains are? It was the most horrific thing. I can hear this terrible sound as if the earth is literally cracking, like the mantle of the earth is breaking apart. And now I'm looking back over my shoulder again in this giant wall of water, just an enormous tsunami, hundreds of feet tall, coming up over the top of this mountain. Again, everybody's trying to run. Then these what felt like large hands come down underneath my arms and lift me up into space. And now I'm looking down upon the earth. And here's an important part about this entire thing. I'm not a scientist. I don't know what would happen if an asteroid of that size were to impact the earth. But what I saw. I personally have not seen Tom Horn's vision of Apophis, the asteroid, but he did see similar waves that I and many other people have seen. If you go to warroompodcast.com, that's warroompodcast.com, 
every week we will post dreams, interpretation of dreams, and sound Christian doctrine. We will also post videos like the confirmation of a communist nuclear wave and a vision that I had of going to one of the gates of hell in a dream in 2014. Now let's return to the conclusion of this video about repentance. The power of repentance is real. Earlier I spoke on how America was founded as a covenant from the very beginning. And in this statement, it said that they were coming to America for the glory of God and for the advancement of the gospel of Jesus Christ. This nation was founded even before the slave ships was founded on a covenant with God, with people who were persecuted Christians being persecuted by the Church of England and the Catholic Church in Europe. This covenant cannot be changed. If we repent and ask God for forgiveness, he will turn the tides and he will turn what he's showing many people around. Remember the plane with the Chinese flag. And as I looked up, I saw a very large military plane, probably about the size of a C-5 aircraft, but it was different. And on this military plane was the large flag for the Chinese government, or the communist Chinese flag was on the side of this military plane. And that they were getting ready to release another thing. I could see the other churches, the other pastors and the leaders within those churches raising their hands up at the same time as me. And what they did was they did two things. They repented. They asked God for forgiveness and said that they would turn away from sin. And they specifically prayed against the attack. Whatever was getting ready to be released from this military plane that had the Chinese flag began to dissolve away. It was like as soon it was get, as it was getting ready to drop from the plane, the attack or whatever the weapon was began to dissolve and it completely disappeared and was not able to affect America. Okay. This shows that God has a plan for the people of God to cry out to God and ask for forgiveness for the sins the church has done. Lord, you want to tear this up. <laughs> so with this in mind, I would not have fear. I would not be afraid. I'm not afraid though, because you know. I won't be here. Or I don't think I'll be here. I don't know. I feel like the rapture might happen after that. Why am I sharing this with you? I'm, I'm sharing this with you because there will be a time where Jesus is coming back. And there will be a time when not only the earth will be destroyed, but the scripture says that all of creation and the universe will be rolled up like a scroll. Uh -oh. It's sort of like a reset button Bro, because there will be a new heaven and a new earth where the earth will go back to where it was supposed to be in the beginning, like the Garden of Eden, mm -hmm. but it will be beautiful. Right. But those that choose to repent from their sins and give their lives to the Lord Jesus and believe on Jesus Christ will be saved. In Acts chapter 2, when 120 people were filled with the Holy Spirit, they began to go on the streets and speak in other tongues and languages that the people from all over the world could hear. Peter stood up and spoke a sermon about what was occurring. And at the end of his sermon, the Bible says that the people were cut to their hearts and asked Peter, what shall we do? And the first words that Peter uttered 
was not just believe on Jesus. It was not just get saved. Peter said, you must repent, which means to turn away and confess your sins, turn away from your sins and accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Amen. So I'm going to pray that prayer right now. And if you pray that prayer with me, with your mouth and mean it in your heart, the scripture says that you will be saved. For whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord shall, shall be saved. So say this prayer with me. Father God, I come to you just as I am. Forgive me of my sin. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins and that he rose on the third day and he's coming back again for me fill me with the Holy Spirit and give me a passion for the lost and a hunger for the things of God and a holy boldness to proclaim and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm set free and forgiven. And I'm on my way to heaven because I have Jesus in my heart. Now, if you prayed that prayer for the first time or if you were in a backslidden state and you prayed that prayer and you meant it in your heart, the Bible says that you're saved. Join a Bible believing church. Bro. Crazy. Oh, what's going on with my eye, guys? This is, it's been like red for like the past couple of days, but never mind that. Okay. But, um, What's crazy is that he knew about COVID 12 years before it happened and said nothing. And he had to repent because you didn't warn his people. If God gives you knowledge about something, it's not just to tell you, hey, this, I'm just going to tell you this business that you, know, you don't need to tell nobody else. Unless he specifically says, don't tell anyone. But for the most part, he's always going to tell you to relay the message all the time. And that's crazy. Like, And then the rapture and then chaos that erupts i we are so close to the end guys and people of god and christians we're not just talking like this to hear ourselves talk we already say we're trying to help y'all god is pouring out his spirit upon the earth and it's going to be a great falling away at the same time so the people that are walking away for good he's also calling people home for good it's time to come back and it's time to come to him he felt any conviction he felt any fear Great. Awesome. That's good. God is calling you. He is reaching out to you. He is chastening you. If you don't know what to do after watching this video, hit me up. My phone number is in the description below. My email is also in the description. I will walk you through salvation personally. Okay? Because the time is now. There's no more waiting. We don't have time like you think we have time. Look at the state of the world. Digital money is coming. United, the United Nations are literally talking about a one world currency as we speak. Bible prophecy is unfolding. It is time to get right, right now. Our Savior is coming back to come get his church. And after that, he's going to come back and wreck this whole mug. <laughs> so, like, I pray that you are with God and the people when this happens. Don't, please don't be the ones left behind. Please don't think this isn't for you or that, um, it's just like, please, I just, I don't even know. Like, but just please seek God. If you need help? I'm right here. It's what people like me are for. God is, God is building my platform. So I don't have thousands of people emailing me and calling me as, every day. So I could personally still help you. So it's like, I just, I'm, I'm, i if you felt anything, please give me a call. Please shoot me a text if you don't like calling. Answer all your questions, help you 
answer and help you understand who Jesus is, who God is. Because it, the time is running thin. Time is running short. And we don't got time like we think we do. But I want to thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you. Um, what is his name? Uh, I forget his name. He said his name. Uh, but thank you for sending this video to me. Thank you for warning your people because we need to be warned. You know what I'm saying? We need to be thankful, God. I'm thankful that God warns us. He don't just let the earth turn upside down without telling us something. You know what I'm saying? So I thank you for the warning. Thank you for the correction, Father. I pray that whoever this reaches, I want this to reach thousands of people, Lord. Not because I want thousands of views, but because thousands of people need to know what's going on, what's happening. You warning your people. And I just pray that this does numbers and you reach people. And they reach out to me and I can do the best I can as your servants to help them get to you. Right. Well, thank you guys for watching. Hit that like button. If you're new, hit the subscribe button to join the, the truth fam. And, you know, as always, I will see you or you will see me next time. Peace.